In this video, we're going to learn how to write an array of structs to a CSV file using C. So a CSV file is a comma separated value file, and they look like this. Each line of the file is a record, and each record is made up of multiple fields of information, where the fields are separated by commas. So this field here could be the student code, this field here could be the student name, this field here could be the student age, and this field here could be the student average. Let's use an array of structs to create a CSV file. The first thing we'll do is create a struct to represent student records with these fields. And we'll use typedef to make it simpler to declare the array of structs. So we'll say typedef struct student, and then we'll have our four members, car type for the type of student, car name 50, for an array of 50 characters to store the name of the student, int age to store the student's age, and double average to store the student's average. Now because this name member is a string, we'll include string.h because this library includes the string copy function that we can use to more easily set the name. Now we'll also set a constant value total students and we'll set it to three. So we can use this constant when working with our array of students. The first thing we'll do is open up the file. We'll need a file pointer variable to do that. We'll say file star file to declare a file pointer variable. We'll open the file by saying file is equal to fopen file.csv and w as our second argument. So the fopen function will open the file called file.csv for writing. That's what the W means, open the file for writing. fopen is gonna return a file pointer that's gonna be stored into file. If fopen fails to open the file, fopen will return null. We can actually check for that. So if file is equal to null, there was a problem opening the file. We'll print out error opening file, followed by a new line, and we'll return one. We're going to return one instead of returning zero, because returning one is a signal to the shell, to the terminal, that something went wrong in the execution of our program. Next, we can create our array of student structs. So we'll say student, students, total students. And we'll just have three students in our array to keep our program smaller. Next, we can set the members of the first student in the array. So we'll say students at index zero dot type is equal to u, where u is the type of student. We're gonna say u means undergrad, for example. Now we'll use the string copy function. We'll say string copy students at index zero dot name, and we'll set the student's name to be Najib. Then we'll set the student's age, and we'll say that Najib is 20. And we'll say students at index zero dot average is equal to 90. We'll actually just copy and paste this code to set the values for the remaining students. So we'll copy this and we'll paste it twice and we'll change these indexes so that we're setting the values for the next student in the array and then the third student in the array. And then we'll just change these values a bit. So we'll leave this as U for the second student. The second student will say is gonna be Mary. Their age will be 19, their average will be 95. The third student will say is type G for graduate student. For the name, we'll say Colvinder. And then for the age, we'll say 21 with an average of, let's say 85 this time, just to make it different. Now to write this data to a CSV file, we'll use a loop with fprintf. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than the total number of students, i plus plus. So the loop is gonna take the counter variable i from zero up until the total number of students. And we'll use fprintf to write the data in each struct to the file as a record of comma separated values. So we'll say fprintf file for the file pointer, then we'll have our format string here with percent %c 
comma, percent s, comma, percent d, comma, and percent dot two f backslash n. So this here is pretty important. These commas are going to be the commas that separate our values. These placeholders here are for each member in our struct. So the percent c is for the type, percent s is for the name, percent d is for the age, and this percent dot two f is for the average. We have dot two because we're saying that two decimal digits of precision is sufficient to output the average. Next, we can have the actual members themselves. So we'll say students at index i for the current student, the loop is outputting, and we'll say dot type. Then students at index i dot name for the name, students at index i dot age for the student's age, and students at index i dot average for the student's average. And this will output these values in place of each placeholder here. One more thing we can do is check to see if there was an error using fprintf. This is unlikely to occur in practice, but it's a good practice to check for the situation and handle it with an error message if that's the case. So we'll say if f error file. F error is going to return true if there was an error with the last function call to work with the file. In this case, fprintf. And what we'll do in this case is print out error writing to file, followed by a new line. And then we'll return one here to again signal that an error has occurred. So this should be it in terms of writing to the file. This line here is probably the most important part where we have the commas separating the values for this record. And this new line character here represents a new line in the file so that each record occurs on a new line. One last thing we could do is close the file because we're now done working with it. And then we'll also print out how many records were written to the file. So we'll say percent D records written where the number of records written is going to be the total number of students. So we can save this and compile our program and give it a try. After compiling, we'll run the program. We see three records written, which seems correct. And we'll check with the file. We see that the CSV data in the file is correct. So this is how we can write CSV data to a file. This approach works for most data, but if the values of our records fields could themselves contain commas, we'll need to use a more advanced approach to account for this. And I'll cover that in a future video. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.